Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Patochny, and I am Executive Creative Director and Head of Wink Creative at Intuit MailChimp. It's my pleasure to be presenting the Campaigner of the Year Awards, presented by Intuit MailChimp to these five outstanding young campaigners. At Intuit MailChimp, a leading email and marketing platform for growing businesses, we're dedicated to empowering our customers to start and grow their businesses with our technology and inspiring content. And as the executive creative director of Wink, MailChimp's in-house creative agency, I'm dedicated to our mission of creating culture by inspiring underdog small business marketers around the world. We want our work to shape and define the future of entrepreneurialism, always putting our customers first while continuously looking for new and inventive ways to give them a voice or a platform to showcase their business. We believe that creativity has the power to change behaviors and shape the world. We strive to create a place that fosters inclusivity and allows creativity to thrive, both within and outside our communities. And as a supporter of young people advocating for change in this world, I'm honored to present the Campaigner of the Year Award to these young leaders who are changing the world for the better with advocacy, communications, and marketing. Effective, clear, and persuasive communications are vital in inspiring and facilitating lasting change. And convincing others that a vision can, can and will become a reality can be challenging. But persuasion is imperative to enact impactful social change. And the young leaders recognized here today are driving that social change by putting the power of persuasion and effective communication into action. These five winners have been carefully selected by an expert panel of judges as they are outstanding examples of how young leaders can create tangible impact through advocacy, marketing, or communications. And through their work, they are collectively driving growth for socially responsible businesses, influencing progressive policy change, and inspiring others to take action. Please join me in congratulating all five winners as they come up to accept their awards. Our first winner is Kira Yusri, and the co-founder and education director of Undi 18, a Malaysian grassroots movement that has successfully lobbied the government and parliament of Malaysia to take steps toward reducing the minimum voting age from 21 to 18 years old. As a result, 5.8 million new young people could be invited to participate in Malaysia's most recent general elections. In 2022, she was appointed as the Special Advisor on Youth to EU Commissioner Jutta Erpelainen and has coordinated multiple direct action activities to advocate for freedom of public assembly, speech, and political inclusion. Congratulations, Kira. Height problems, right. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, today we celebrate the incredible strides we have made in championing the voices of young people and advocating for human rights. I am honoured to be standing before you as a recipient of the Campaign of the Year Award to represent the efforts of the Undi 18 team and all the young activists who have joined us on this remarkable journey. Democracy is an ever-changing phenomenon, but what's consistent is that democracy, above all, puts power in the hands of the people. I discovered activism when I was a university student studying college final year. And in Malaysia, until very recently, students were not allowed to speak up or comment on issues, risking expulsion and even arrests just to share an opinion. I have faced my fair share of harassment, intimidation and arrests by the state just for expressing my opinion on what's happening in Malaysia. Our story began with a very simple yet profound belief that youth deserve a voice. My organization, Undi 18, successfully campaigned and implemented the lowering of the voting age. The constitutional amendment added 5.8 million new voters overnight, a 40% increase in the number of voters in Malaysia. This radically transformed our political landscape with young Malaysians suddenly forming almost half and more of the, of the voter, voter bloc. It was a historical moment of bipartisanship as the constitutional amendment was passed unanimously in Parliament and the Senate. I'm incredibly proud to also say that this past election, young voters came out in full force, charting the highest ever turnout rate of voters in Malaysian history. 
In our journey, we've witnessed the transformational power of digital campaigns. They have bridged generational gaps, connected us with decision makers, and pushed the boundaries of what is possible. Mobilization for us has never been easier than in the age of digital campaigns. Politics, to me, isn't just petty scandals or esoteric philosophy. It's about minimum wage, about being able to afford shelter, about development policies, and about being able to live with dignity. Young Malaysians have the right to choose leaders that represent their vision for a better Malaysia. In times of crisis, the world needs stable partnerships based on joint interests and values. In One Young World, we represent the mission bigger than ourselves, the hopes and aspirations of our villages, cities, schools, and universities. Many of us traveled many hours to get here to be in this platform. And we need to fully utilize this platform we have today for the better of tomorrow. I'd like to just close quickly with a slogan from Undi 18. Tiada perwakilan tanpa penyertaan. Translate to no representation without participation. The future of our world lies in inclusivity, diversity, and sustainability. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Next, please welcome Matthew Nozaku Chukuri Blaze. Blaze is executive director at Obodo, a youth led nonprofit furthering the normalization of queer experiences and narratives in Nigeria. They have spearheaded several campaigns and community driven initiatives, bridging the gap between art, technology, and philanthropy. As a passionate LGBTQ rights activist, they played a key role in the End SARS movement the Queer Lives Matter, and End Homophobia in Nigeria campaigns, spotlighting police brutality and igniting a nationwide discourse on systemic change and intersectionality. By using the power of social media mobilization, Blaze continues to amplify the voices of young queer Nigerians in, ju in demanding justice and accountability. Congratulations, Blaze. Okay. At the age of 19, I found myself still struggling with my sexuality as a gay person in Nigeria. A newspaper had publicly disclosed my identity to the world, and uh, I wasn't prepared, I can't say I wasn't prepared to face the world. I was very strong at that point. However, I wasn't prepared to face my family. What would I say to them? Their words had the power to shatter the strength I had built over the years. My sibling saw the news and he called me, declaring me an embarrassment to the family. I cried throughout that night and drank so much alcohol until I passed out. On August 29th, 2003, in Delta State, Nigeria, the police raided a gathering as they often did and arrested approximately 69 individuals. They were subsequently paraded in the media and accused of attending a gay marriage. For those who are unaware, being involved in a gay marriage carries 14 years imprisonment penalty. Why merely being gay could lead you to 10 years imprisonment in Nigeria, or even dead by stoning in regions of Nigeria where the Sharia law is practiced. This unjust arrest and mistreatment based on perceived gender and sexual orientation are clear violation of human rights. No one should endure such trauma, physical torture, and discrimination for being simply themselves, for aspects they can also not change. Everyone deserves to contribute their quota to the society, and Obodo is working towards make, making that future possible. This award is dedicated to those who have suffered for this wrongful arrest, state-sponsored torture and abuses, forced outing and eviction, unimaginable powerlessness, and the complete disruption of their lives. In Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Cameroon, South Africa, these stories are similar. In the words of queer Nigerian feminist writer, Otimenya Degbe, why should this matter? It should matter because we are all already here, and the only world worth fighting for is a world that includes all of us. I thank everyone for showing me the love that brought me here, and uh, 
I thank everyone for giving me the support that does not require me to shrink myself. Thank you. Trang Chu Min is a long-standing sustainability advocate and a journalist who has made it her mission to use storytelling to raise awareness on underreported social and environmental issues. She currently leads sustainability communications and thought leadership for Singapore's Sovereign Wealth Fund to catalyze greater climate action among companies, governments, and civil society. She successfully developed the first global communication strategy for the Thomson Reuters Foundation's pro bono legal service for NGOs and social enterprises. Alongside this, she has played a key role in multi and varied campaigns, including the campaign that led to the first state law banning child marriage in the US, the opening of the first safe house for LGBTQ plus refugees in the UK, a legal case fighting child sexual abuse in India, and a campaign in partnership with youth nonprofit Bye Bye Plastic Bags that ultimately led to Bali becoming the first Indonesian province to ban plastic bags, straws, and styrofoam. Congratulations, Chong. Wow, I think um, Kira and Blaze are hard eggs to follow, so please be kind to me. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to express my heartfelt gratitude to the judges, Katie and Melchim, and the One Young World family. The last few days have been nothing, nothing but inspirational. I've been so humbled by everyone on stage and each and all of you in the audience, from every speaker to every conversation. As a Vietnamese girl raised in small town Hungary and a lifelong immigrant who spent most of my life experiencing racism and sexism, I've always considered myself an underdog um, so really standing here receiving this award is something I would have never imagined. And I must confess, I must confess, I did question but I was deserving of it. So for anyone in the audience that's grappling with similar insecurities, know that you're not alone. I'm living proof that anything is possible, that everyone can become a change maker. I was never the most talented, vocal, or even confident individuals, but I've always believed in passion, purpose, and patience, that with relentless commitment to making a difference, together with the willingness to go the extra mile, the sky is the limit. But I must also recognize my privileged position. This award is really a timely reminder of the incredible support network that has enabled me to work on so many meaningful campaigns, from child marriage in the US to plastic pollution in Indonesia, and even niche issues such as conversion therapy or acid violence. I, I must admit, it's, it's been a, a journey that has empowered me so much. So I want to use this speech to really make a personal pledge to continue the good fight, especially in three areas that are incredibly dear to heart. One, advocating for robust climate action to ensure a timely but also inclusive transition, especially in the global south. Two, to champion wildlife conservation, especially the protection of some of the most endangered but also most misunderstood predators such as sharks. And three, using the power of sports and the arts to empower people with disabilities to lead a more fulfilling life. The world is fraught with so many challenges from the climate and biodiversity crisis, the rampant socioeconomic inequalities, and multiple conflicts and humanitarian emergencies. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the multitude of causes that demand our attention and support. But I'm confident that together, with all of you inspiring individuals and change makers, we have the power to drive positive change, regardless of the role we each play. Thank you. Andrew Pagonis is the Global Marketing Manager for Shopping and Commerce at Google and has proactively used this role to better the lives of underrepresented groups and those running small, diverse-owned businesses. He was responsible for creating and authoring Google's Retail Marketing Guide, 
Translated into 17 languages for global accessibility, this guide equipped over 3.5 million businesses with free online tools to generate sales and stay afloat during the uncertainty of the pandemic. Andrew has also utilized Google's platform to champion LGBTQ plus businesses. He co-led Google's sponsorship of Pride, diverting money away from corporate participation in the parade to instead fund underrepresented groups of young LGBTQ plus people to attend and inspiring other corporations to do the same. Andrew now develops the content for and leads free digital skills training globally for thousands of LGBTQ plus run businesses, helping them to get discovered and grow online. Congratulations, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much, One Young World, for this recognition. Um, I cannot express how grateful I am to be recognized as a campaigner of the year. Um, I've followed One Young World for years, uh, and I'm continually inspired by each and every person that is part of this community, uh, whether you're championing change within your organization or you're forging your own path of activism. The proudest achievements that I've had in my career involve channeling the resources and harnessing the platform of the corporations I work for, like Google, uh, to make a meaningful difference to underrepresented groups. It's our responsibility to, as parts of the organization to identify how we can proactively advocate for the change that we want to see. We have the opportunity to utilize the tools, resources, brands, and wide reach of our companies to amplify the impact of our work. And it's our responsibility to understand where those opportunities lie. Through my work in marketing at Google, I was able to strategically pivot the scope of my role to align the needs of the Google business with the needs of the community and underrepresented groups. From writing a marketing guide for small businesses to help them stay afloat during times of uncertainty like COVID, uh, uh, to shifting Google's keynote presentation at Advertising Week APAC to instead talk about the importance of hiring diverse talent for teams, um, to then channeling corporate resources in Pride to instead allow underfunded LGBTQ plus organizations to attend the parade instead of corporate participation. All of these initiatives had very little internal corporate backlash because they were aligned to the values of the business, which helped them get across the line and then help these groups. So I would encourage anyone that is working at the many companies that we have represented in this room uh, to understand how you can affect positive change from within the walls of these conglomerates. Whether that's one, challenging a corporate policy to help make your workplace more accessible and inclusive. Two, influencing the roadmap of your corporation's brands or products and making sure that they are meaningfully driving culture in a positive direction. Or three, advocating for areas of philanthropy within your organization that aligns the values of the organization with the needs of these communities, and really helping understand how you can channel corporate resources into the betterment of society. Thank you again, One Young World. Um, I actually want to dedicate this award to my mother, Yvonne, um, who's here today all the way from Australia. Um, <laughs> so, thank you. Um, she flew 60 hours just to see me accept this award. So um, thank you all so much. Um, and my mum always taught me to shoot for the moon because even if you don't succeed, you'll land in the stars somewhere. So I would encourage everyone to do the same. Thank you. Vanessa Turnbull Roberts is a proud Bunjalung Wijibawabal woman, activist, lawyer, writer, and a researcher at Jumbuna Institute Indigenous Education and Research, and the law faculty at the University of Technology in Sydney. Vanessa is a survivor of the out-of-home care system, where she was forcibly removed at the age of 10 years old. She now dedicates her work to transforming the forced removal practices of First Nations child removal and seeking justice for First Nations people and children, both in Australia and globally. She is currently writing her first book, Long Yarn, Long Yarn Short, We Are Still Here, to share the experience of Indigenous children who did not get to come home. 
Her leadership and advocacy are changing the way Australia's child protection system intervenes and surveils the lives of Indigenous people, ensuring that First Nation families are self-determined whilst addressing the fundamental harms of intergenerational trauma. Honored with the Australian Human Rights Medal, Vanessa is recognized as one of 10 change makers and a member of the power generation of emerging Indigenous leaders. Congratulations, Vanessa. This is really funny in this podium up and down business. <laughs> Jingiwala, Nongali Jugan, Jugan Nongali. I just spoke in my language, and what I just shared was an acknowledgement of my country and who I am and where my people come from. Thank you for this warm welcome, this love, and this opportunity to stand here on the One Young World stage. It's an immense privilege that I do not take lightly. Before I begin, I must acknowledge the, tra the traditional stories of this land, the history of displacement, and the stories that existed far beyond us being here today. As a visitor on these lands, it is my protocol and a duty to respect this place, the stories that existed prior to us. I would further like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of my land and my country and my people back home. We are the saltwater people. We are the lands, we are the seas, we are the skies and we are still here. I pay homage to my people, our strength and our survival, and I pay homage to the last panel of First Nations people who shared their stories of truth and justice and passion for a better world. My name is Vanessa Turnbull Roberts, and I'm a proud Bunjilung Wujibal Waibal woman. As I said, my people are the salt water people. We are sovereign in our practice. We practice sovereignty in how we raise our children, in how we connect, in how we are, and how we do and how we be. My daughter is actually here today. <laughs> Thank you. And, and whilst I remain the person who birthed my daughter, my daughter is surrounded by healers, by aunties, by uncles, by knowledge holders, by power and love. My daughter is not just my daughter, but a daughter to many. I would like to thank MailChimp for their unwavering support in backing the work of justice of love and of community and giving back. I would also like to thank all the volunteers who made this possible at One Young World. No doubt this wouldn't be possible without you all. I'm a lawyer and I'm a human rights advocate where my work is centered around the rights and well-being of First Nations children and young people. In particular, it's about addressing the injustices faced by our people. I'm a survivor of the family policing system which many of you just heard in the introduction as out of home care. As a survivor of the family policing system, I'm here to share with you that it is, it is a system designed intentionally to target surveillance, indigenous black and brown First Nations families and communities. It is a system that is based on a business venture that continues to harm our people every single day and indigenous people around the world. I am the survivor that they did not want to see speaking here today. And I am the survivor of the system that must ensure that the voices and the bodies of the children and young people that still continue to be removed as I speak here today are heard. For so many people here today, you may be thinking this does not happen. You may be thinking, how can someone be from Australia in a world where it's developed, where there isn't any injustices, where there is national conversations around Indigenous rights? But when it comes to First Nations people, we are still silenced by the structural violence of the harm that continues to hurt our people. I work with families every single day where I see a mother escaping family and domestic violence and as a result, she is punished and has her child removed. Shame. I work with families where they escape international waters to try and seek freedom with their children escaping domestic and family violence and the Hague Convention weaponizes the law against them. I stand here today as a survivor, and I stand here today accepting this award with honour and with acknowledgement of the privilege that sits with this award. When our children are stolen from their homes, from their families and communities, we are impacting intersectionality of climate justice, of sovereignty, of knowledge holders, of our future. 
because when we are displaced with a continued history that has not stopped, we can't bring healing to our communities and our people. So to everybody here today, there is an element of privilege that exists with our presence in being in this room. So I encourage you all, no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, please do not be silent. Silence is a privilege. This isn't for me, this is for a movement. This is for children and young people in their little bodies that are terrified right now. I was stolen in the middle of the night by over 12 police officers. My hands put behind my back and told to hug my father one last time. My parents are no longer on this earth anymore and I dedicate this award to them. No doubt, we are all here today because we just want to make this world a little bit better than yesterday. I thank you so much for allowing me to share with you all, to provide insight into a history that continues. But I ask you this, and I call to action this message. Even if you are free, the duty is to free somebody else. Even if your shackles are different from the other person. We must end the incarceration and the pipeline of children being stolen and placed into custody. We must bring our children home. And we must remember, just like I shared about my daughter, I am not just her mother, many people are, that when it comes to children and young people, there is a better way to respond to our connection to each other and our quality relationships. Punitive measures don't have to be the answer, but love and community already sits here. So thank you so much. Woo! Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us here today and a huge congratulations again to our five winners.